So one of the hardest things for football players is training camp. And it's an essential part of building a team. You bring everybody together, freshmen and seniors, and you're gonna work on nothing but football for a couple weeks. And really it's probably hardest for the freshmen because this is their first time joining the team. They don't know what to expect. And I talk to them a lot about how they have to get their mindset. What's the frame of mind they need to be in to know that they're going to go through a tough time here, but it's the only way to get to the games. Because at some point, every one of them during training camp is gonna have a bad practice or a bad play or a hard day, and they're gonna question, am I at the right place doing the right thing? And they'll come to me and I'll tell them, you remember when I told you training camp's gonna be hard. You're gonna have to fight through it. And they're like, yeah, you're right, coach. And they'll look back at what's the right thing to be focusing on. And that's the goal I want. I wanna play, I wanna be out in the games. How do I get there? I have to fight through training camp. I have to work hard and I can't worry about getting discouraged because it'll all be worth it. I knew these challenges were coming. I'm not gonna be discouraged. I'm gonna fight through. Now in the next two rules, rules seven and eight, Ignatius is gonna give us further tools for dealing with spiritual desolation. The reason he spends time on spiritual desolation is because I believe it's true to say for most dedicated people, and I'm gonna include us together listening here, for most of the way on the spiritual life, the greatest obstacle is spiritual desolation when we get disheartened and discouraged. So a teaching that gives us the, the, the ability to deal with this, obviously with God's grace, but gives us the tools to deal with this is one of the greatest gifts that we can be given in the spiritual life. All right, to make it concrete, let's go back to our young woman who gets the exam back in the morning and it's discouraging. She really worked hard at it, didn't go as well as she'd hoped. She goes on social media, she already discouraged, goes on social media a bit later in the day and there's something that hurts something said about her that hurts there. So we're describing non-spiritual desolation. It's after supper now. She normally prays for 15 minutes before beginning the activity of the evening. No desire to pray, doesn't feel God's closeness, just a heaviness in her heart. She is now experiencing spiritual desolation. And the pull in time of spiritual desolation is gonna to be to flee from it in ways that aren't really helpful. So. This is when, if I may say it reverently, we head to the refrigerator for the third time or the fourth time. Or she just immerses herself in, in Netflix or something like this on YouTube. Uh, she feels the desire just to pick up the phone and call, we'll call her a friend with whom she knows as the conversation goes along, it's gonna get gossipy and critical of others and leave her feeling empty. Now, she's in spiritual desolation. The enemy is gonna to try to do two different things and Ignatius wants to alert us to these in rules seven and eight. The first thing the, the enemy is gonna to try to say to her or to any one of us in spiritual desolation is, you're too weak. You can't resist this, you can't reject this, you're gonna give in. There is what I call the litany of spiritual desolation which goes like this, I can't, I can't, I can't, I can't, I can't pray today, I, I can't go to the group today, I can't go to the sacraments today, I can't keep up with this effort to be holy, I can't, I can't. And what Ignatius invites us to do is right in the darkness of the spiritual desolation to call to mind that you can because even though you don't feel it, you know with the absolute certitude of faith that God is giving you all the grace that you need to get safely through this spiritual desolation. If this young woman, after supper, alone in her room in spiritual desolation, calls this thought to mind, I feel pretty weak here, Lord, but I know that you're giving me all the grace I need. I know that I can make the right choices here with your, with your uh, grace and your strength. She is much more likely now to get through the spiritual desolation. Never believe the lie of the enemy, which will try to say to you, you can't, you can because God is always with you, always giving you all the grace that you need. The second thing that the enemy is gonna to try to do is to tell you, try to make you believe that this is just gonna go on and on and on and on. Desolation is like putting on a pair of sunglasses. Shade them more or less darkly depending on how heavy the, de the desolation is. And you look forward and everything you see looks dark, but 
you take the sunglasses off. This is discernment. Be aware of what's going on. Understand that it's just a spiritual desolation of the enemy and work firmly to reject it. You take the sunglasses of the spiritual desolation off and you look forward and it's no longer dark. All right, the enemy is going to try to claim power over the future. You know what you're experiencing tonight? You're going to experience this tomorrow and next week and next month, the whole year. It's just a long, gray, heavy, difficult spiritual desolation. That's all that lies ahead. Now, if you believe that lie, you're very likely to give in to the spiritual desolation. Doctor comes into a hospital room, two beds, two patients, different symptoms, roughly the same physical discomfort. Stops by the bed of the first patient, patient reviews the charts, speaks to the patient and says, I'm sorry, I have to tell you, I know you're feeling some discomfort. It's going to be a few months yet before things get better. Goes and speaks to the second patient, charts, questions, says, I know you're feeling some discomfort today, but I can tell you that by tomorrow, you're going to be as good as new. Walks out of the room. How do these two patients who are roughly feeling the same physical discomfort react? The one who knows that this is going to go on and on and on, probably be pretty discouraged, flops back in his bed, maybe mindlessly goes through the television, television channels. The other one, feeling the same discomfort, he's on the phone speaking to his wife, talking to his boss, making plans to get home. There's all kinds of energy there. Spiritually, our situation, the enemy wants us to believe that our situation is the first. It's all a lie. Spiritually, our situation, this is the wonderful thing to remember in time of desolation, is like the second. This desolation is going to end a lot sooner. It's a beautiful word. Ignatius says soon, a lot sooner than the desolation wants us to believe. Now, if the young woman, after supper, alone in her room, calls this to mind, it's not going to go on and on and on like this. She's going to have a lot more energy to deal with this and to get through it safely. So let's look at Ignatius's two rules. Rule seven, when you are in spiritual desolation, think, and this is the key thing here, the way you think really matters. It's important in the spiritual life. And Ignatius keeps coming back to this. There are certain ways of thinking in time of spiritual desolation that are going to make it a lot easier to get through the desolation. Actually, what you're doing when you think consciously about these things is that you're touching the truth of the situation, which undoes the enemy's lies. Everything about spiritual desolation is a lie. Who is the enemy biblically? The liar and the father of lies. Never believe anything that spiritual desolation is telling you, which is a wonderful thing to realize. It's like when you wake up from a difficult dream and you say, oh, it wasn't real, it was just a dream. The lies the enemies will, enemy will tell you in spiritual desolation are only that which is a wonderful thing to realize and to bring into daily life in the spiritual life. So when you are in spiritual desolation, think of this truth. As you sit there at your desk, as you're walking home, as you're driving, God is giving me all the grace that I need to get safely through this desolation. I can do it because God's grace is with me. And rule eight, when you are in spiritual desolation, be patient. If you promise the Lord 15 minutes, don't give him 10. Don't give him 14. Give him the full 15 minutes. If you told the Lord you were going to confession at 4 o'clock on Saturday, get yourself there at 4 o'clock. When you are in spiritual desolation, be patient. Stay the course. And remember, because this is what makes it so much easier to do that, remember that consolation will return much sooner than the desolation is telling you. Rules 7 and 8 are wonderful friends for the journey. And Ignatius isn't done yet. He has more tools yet to give us.